Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews. Welcome to my review of the ASRock Z170M ITX-AC motherboard. So this is a more budget-oriented but unlocked chipset for the new Skylake platform on, you know, based on the 1151 chipset. So we're going to do a quick overview of the board before we get into the BIOS. Um, so here we have our socket. This is two PWM connectors for your CPU cooler. We have a four pin connector as well as a white 20 pin connector. That's really all to see. Um, we have a USB 3 connector here for say the sixes. Uh, this slot right here will be used for the AC Wi-Fi card. So you still have to install that one yourself as well as installing a little bracket to hold the antennas um, to the IO shield yourself. So that's kind of annoying. I already made a rant about it in a previous video. So let's just move on from that. We get a copper colored heatsink. May not be for everyone. Uh, we get a, a PCI slot here, obviously. HD audio, USB 2, and a TWM, TPM connector. All that sort of lovely stuff. We have a four plus two phase design here to do power delivery. Nothing massive, nothing impressive, but it should be enough for most use. In terms of accessories, we get a really plain looking IO shield. We get this Wi-Fi card as well as the bracket you need to secure it to your motherboard. We get two antennas which can flex uh, and we have two SATA 6 cables. That's all. In terms of IO, we have six USB 3 connectors, two USB 2 connectors. For audio, we have microphone in, we have audio out as well as a subwoofer connector. We have a Realtek gigabit ethernet connector and an intel gigabit ethernet connector we have a dvi connector uh, for your displays we also have full size hdmi and display port for that as well as a combined ps2 connector for keyboard and mouse so the bios on this motherboard is fairly simple yet also a bit complicated because of the way stuff is laid out so you have your basic main screen like usual uh, but you also have the oc tweaker uh, for some weird reason, CPU configuration, which is uh, to do with clock speeds and all that sort of stuff, is separated from voltage configuration, so you constantly have to go through these folders. Bit of an annoyance. Other than that, though, this is fairly, you know, identical to every BIOS ever. Bunch of tools in here. Um, you can browse your files, your drives from the BIOS. It's really nice. You can also internet flash it. Great to have. Great feature to have, really. It's just... Other than, you know, the weird layout of the CPU configuration and the voltage configuration, it's pretty nice. Right then guys, we did an overview, we had a look at the BIOS. Right now, it's time to do a conclusion on the ASRock Z170M ITX AC. Quite a long name, I'm going to start off in the order of the name. So, the board by ASRock, it's pretty cool. Um, however, ASRock has this really annoying um, tendency to make you install the Wi-Fi card yourself, which is a complete disaster. It's so, so annoying that you have to do that yourself. Every other manufacturer does it for you. Moving on though, um, you know, the price point is kind of good, so that maybe makes up for that little bit of extra fiddling you have to do yourself. Um, so the chipset is unlocked, again, at the price point, that's really good. It allows for overclocking, but of course, as we saw, it's only a six plus two uh, four plus two phase power design, there are no active you know, heat sinks on there or anything. There are no heat sinks on there at all except for the chipset. So your overclocking isn't going to be too massive, which I mean on an ITX system, chances are you don't have the um, cooling headroom anyway to do that sort of stuff. So that's still all alright. Uh, but yeah, the Wi-Fi performance is pretty strong. Obviously I can't give you exact numbers because Wi-Fi is always different and what I'm, you know, the results I get won't be the same as the results someone else will get. So. Wi-Fi testing is very difficult to do, so I'm not doing it. However, you know, moving on to the board, everything's really nice, everything works. You have this um, easy to update BIOS, which you can update right from the BIOS itself. You have to use the Realtek um, Ethernet adapter, though it wouldn't work for me with the Intel adapter until I installed the drivers for that in Windows and updated the BIOS that way. Anyway, Overall, the board is pretty good, and at the price point, it's definitely something worth considering if you're going for an ITX build. The way it looks may not appeal to everyone. Um, you know, it has all the features, but it's not too, you know, it doesn't have all the fancy features that some boards have. Anyway, guys, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you dislike it. Subscribe to Unicorn Review so you can get a free update every Friday at 7 when I put a new video up. I also put them up on Tuesdays sometimes when I have, you know, enough content 
ready for you guys. And um, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, you can support the channel on Patreon. And I guess to finish off, a thank you very much for watching.